Hello and welcome to Modern Masters, a, a brand new cricket show here on ESPN Crick Info, where we look at me and, of course, Rahul Dravid here, two batsmen. We'll talk about some of the finest batsmen of our times. It's a list of about 14 batsmen, Rahul, uh, batsmen yeah. that you mostly played with. Uh, I think all of them. I've played with all of them. Uh, quite exciting as well, as we were making this list, you know, you sort of realized that uh, all of them are great. And I think all of them have uh, phenomenal and formidable records, uh, but uh, very different as well. And, and just shows that, you know, you can be different, but, you know, still have very successful test careers. So, basically, batsmen who caught our fancy, like, you know, just by watching or playing with them, you could see that they had something different, something yeah. extraordinary. Not a definitive list, but definitely a list of people, I think, who made an impact, especially in this, in this particular era, or the era that I played in. And, of course, um, you know, we're going to analyze every batsman and go into certain areas of their batting. What's the first? Technique. Technique is the first one. Very important for a batsman. Temperament is the other. Yeah, I think temperament is obviously probably one of the most important things for a batsman because it's, uh, it defines, uh, you know, helps you build on that technique and, and maximize, uh, you know, your talent or your potential. And then we'll also look at the impact that the batsman made on the game. That's another parameter that we'll look at. Adaptability, versatility of a batsman. Very yeah. important to judge his uh, greatness or, you know, just his... Uh, Effectiveness. Playing in all conditions, I think, uh, you know, you, that, that's one of the great things about international cricket. You get challenged, uh, you know, spin in India or in the subcontinent, pace and bounce in, in Australia, South Africa, uh, different conditions in England where the ball, you know, seams and swings. So, um, so yeah, I think, uh, you know, the sign of a, of a really good or great player is one who's had that success all around. Some might not have had and, and I think it'd be great to discuss and analyze as to why and why we think uh, they might not have been that successful in certain conditions. And finally, we'll also talk about weakness, which is which will seem strange because you're talking about some truly great batsmen and weakness. Do these batsmen have weakness? But as you would know, any human, you know, strengths, weaknesses are always there. And yeah, I think it's important to look at those areas as well. It is. I think it's very important to look at uh, at areas where, uh, you know, we might have felt people, uh, you know, have, would have had sort of perceived weaknesses. Uh, tactics, the way people might have looked to bowl against them, especially at least looking from an Indian angle. A lot of these batsmen that I've played against, uh, you know, could bring in that angle of how we would have looked to get them out. Uh, but yeah, like, like I said earlier, I think it's very different batsmen, uh, different strengths, uh, different weaknesses and, and unique in a, in a lot of ways. And uh, Rahul Dravid is a pretty tough selector because he's excluded one very successful, uh, truly great uh, modern day batting great from this list. And that's Rahul Dravid himself. So, you didn't feel like yeah, picking yourself. Conflict of interest, Sanjay. I can't, <laughs> <laughs> I can't be the selector and pick myself. The first batsman that we're going to talk about is a batsman that gets us all very excited. He's that kind of a batsman. We're in the same arc. Every ball, basically, is an opportunity to score. That's how Verenda Savo plays. And that's why I love watching him bat. I mean... And you think about the courage, the, the mental courage that it takes to play like that because you're going to fail sometimes and you're going to play some horrible shots that are going to look bad. And when you do it as an opener, it, it stands out even more than when you do it in the middle order. So you're going to cop a lot of criticism for playing irrational shots and, not, and being irresponsible. But to have the courage to just sort of say, well, to hell with you, I'm just going to keep playing the same way. That takes a lot of mental courage and that's, I think, that's one of uh, Verenda Sovag's great strengths. He's the classic see the ball, hit the ball player. You know, and, you know, and if you're going to simplify the game of cricket as a batsman, that's what it is. It's a see the ball, hit the ball game. And Verenda Sovag has managed to cut all the crap away and that's all he's left with. M amazing player. So there you are. Ian Chappell is uh, a guy who's not easy to please, but he's always been very, very uh, impressed with Sovag. And so have we been. Uh, Rahul. Virendra Sehwag, you know, when you take that name, what comes to your mind first when you think of Virendra Sehwag, the batsman? I think the joy. I think, uh, you know, what first, when you think of Viru, you think of just the joy that he brought, uh, you know, to, to so many, I guess, to players who played with him uh, and millions of fans. And a game changer. I think he redefined in a lot of ways, uh, for me at least, the way opening batsmen have been perceived. Uh, I know before him, uh, you know, there was people like Sanat Jaisuria who played in sort of a different manner to what a traditional opening batsman was supposed to play like. But I think no one's had that kind of success that Viru's had, uh, at least in these modern times. And, and I think, uh, you know, for a whole generation of young Indian batsmen coming up, he's uh, he simply changed the way they see the role of an opener. 
test opener for a guy who played in the middle order at the first class level. And I've always felt this with Sehwag. He gave us no warning about, you know, his potential greatness at the test level. So did that surprise you? Coming through the ranks, you always hear about a Rahul Dravid, you know, he's looking good, can become a good test batsman. Tendulkar, at the age of 14, people knew he was going to play for India. Seva gave us no such warning. Not at all. In fact, I think he's, you know, sort of... I, though I think he had played for India under-19 and he has um, a pretty good first-class record before he got into the Indian side. But it was always seen more of, I think, as a one-day player. A player who could, you know, tonk a few balls at the end and bowl a bit of off-spin. Uh, you know, that, I think, coming up, I remember in the sort of the late 90s, that was when we heard of Virendra Sehwag, everyone talked of him, oh, he's going to be a fantastic one-day player, he's going to be a great one-day player. Nobody said he's going to be a great test player and, and definitely not a great test opener. You know, How did a, that happen? Did that surprise you? Because you were there when he made his test debut. A brilliant hundred, batting at yeah. six. Uh, you know, no doubt that you could see that. Uh, you know, there was a this was a boy with exceptional talent, incredible ball striking ability. Uh, you know, one of the great strengths of Viru was his ability to have a still head and and an uncomplicated approach. I mean, he didn't really too much bother about you know whether his feet were moving or you know what positions he was getting to. In fact, though he got into good positions, uh, but very uncomplicated. So great, exciting start at six. But, you know, the fact that he would go on and be successful as an opener definitely did surprise yeah, me. Yeah, you just uh, started talking about his technique. Let's, let's dwell on that a little more. Uh, footwork is something that's always talked about. But you have a theory that it's not always frozen, right? Those feet on the crease. There are occasions when he does move his feet. In, in fact, I, I think actually he does feet, move his feet, you know, quite well. Um, mm. You know, one of the things about, about Viru is that he's a, an all-round player. He's not a kind of player who's... His great strength is on the offside, and he's a you know fantastic uh, player on the offside. Uh, but the very fact that he scores so quickly means that he cannot be contained, and he does score exceptionally quickly on the leg side as well. For that, you have to get into good positions. So moving your feet may is not only about having an exaggerated forward movement, which Viru does not have, uh, but it's about getting into good positions. And I think he does that exceptionally well, uh, which allows him to then open up all sides of the wicket. In fact, almost. You know, 360 degrees, which it makes him an exceptionally hard batsman to control and contain. Uh, so no, I, I, and obviously you com combine that with you know a still head and a, and a back lift with a cocking of the wrist that he has, uh, you know, makes him uh, phenomenal. Does that help in playing the high bounce uh, balls better? Because when you are sort of your wrist is like this, as opposed to this. There's a big adjustment to be made. Do you think that helped him? You know, I think he's got runs on bouncy pitch, and maybe not as consistently. Where the ball is bounce, he's got some phenomenal innings uh, on those pitches. Uh, yes, I think early on in his career, uh, you know, Viru scored runs all over the world. I think he's, ha he's got hundreds all over the world. So, of late, I think he struggled a little bit overseas, but but especially in the early part of his career, he was, you know, he's, he'd got runs everywhere. And I think the very fact that uh, he has this high back lift uh, and uh, a still head and a beautiful bat flow, you know, allows him to, uh, you know, keep a straight, get get a full face of a bat on, on, on sort of each ball. And even if you watch him defence, a lot of times he's got a really good defence because he's able to bring a full face of the bat. There's no half measures there. You know, he brings the, even if his feet don't get to the pitch of the ball, the bat comes, you know, straight down the line of the ball. Which it's interesting you bring the bat uh, thing because when you talk about Sehwag, people always talk about his attacking play and everything. But he's got one of the straightest bat that comes down on the ball, you know, which is why... You know, he's played over 100 test matches and has been so effective. Yeah, I mean, he's got a very good technique. I, I believe that technique is, is not only about defensive technique. I think the better technique you have allows you to actually get into better positions to be able to play atta more attacking cricket as well. And, and from that point of view, if you look at it, Viru has a, a really good attacking technique. There are conditions in which, you know, uh, his lack of feet movement or sometimes his impetuousness gets the better of him. But, uh, you know, when you look at it as a whole and as a career over 100 test matches, uh, I think, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's been incredibly successful. And never felt the need to play the sweep shot. You know, he's played spin a lot, but he's not somebody that, you know, go down on his knee and play the sweep shot a lot. And, you know, for somebody, even on turning pitches, he looked to score in front of the wicket, which is incredible and one of the more difficult things to do. Would against it? the spin as well. I yeah. think if you look at Viru, uh, I think one of the finest players of, uh, of bowling against the spin, especially the off-spinner. Remember, a double hundred he scored at uh, at Gaul. Every one of us was struggling against Murli yeah. uh, and Ajanta Mendes. And, uh, you know, Viru came out there and, and, and just played against the spin. He played both Murli and uh, Ajanta Mendes against the spin through the whole innings. And, and really, I think for all of us watching in the dressing room, it was uh, an education, literally, to how to play 
positively against you know world class top quality spin and that's a great skill it's a great skill to be able to play against the spin so actually it's quite interesting so on the technical front with sehwag you think he was pretty good because the general feeling is that you know technique is one of his weaknesses no i i rated him always uh, really good on technique hmm. because uh, i th- i think you know when you can play as positively and with a strike rate like that you've got to get yourself into good positions and technique is about getting into good positions somebody should do a real study on these people you know mahendra singh dhoni sehwag they just think different temperamentally completely a different animal you know sehwag is